Morning everybody, welcome to Coldstream. This is the first town from England when you enter Scotland. Coldstream is the first Scottish town. Uh, we're stood here in Henderson Park and I'm just going to show you a couple of things. I'll spin the camera around. Now, before we get onto the view and the River Tweed and England, which is right there, let's just read out. This stone was presented to the borough of Coldstream by the Coldstream Regiment of foot guards on the day on which they were proud to receive the freedom of the borough on the 10th of August 1968. It was from here on the 1st of January 1660 that General Monk crossed the River Tweed to start his march to London, culminating in the restoration of King Charles II. This is the River Tweed that separates England on that side to Scotland, which is behind me. And it was from this very spot that I'm stood that the Scottish lookouts in 1296 saw King Edward I's army marching from England into Scotland. And it took many years for the Scots to organize and defeat the English and save Scotland, which would have just become part of England, I guess, in the 1300s, but it didn't. So look at the sunshine. Look at the countryside. And just think of thousands of men marching up here 725 years ago. It's incredible. There's a scene at the end of the film, Lord of the Flies, which I'm sure you all watched in school like I did when the teacher wheels in the TV on the trolley with a VCR player, then that's when you know you're in for a good time. Um, There's a great scene at the end of Lord of the Flies where after two hours of these children turning into savages and killing each other and creating this hierarchy of tribalism and horror, almost like uh, Colonel Kirst in Bloody Apocalypse Now, deep in the jungle, was it? Joseph Conrad. What was the original story? A Heart of Darkness. That's the one. So Lord of the Flies is a heart of darkness for kids. And there's a moment when they're um, at the end of the movie where they're going to kill yet another child. I don't know what he did. He farted in the wrong time or looked at someone the wrong way. Little savages. And they're running down the beach. And then either a policeman or a Navy officer or, I forget, a uniformed American wearing aviator sunglasses. He looks down at these tribally painted kids carrying spears covered in blood. And he, I think if I remember, he takes his glasses off and he goes, what the hell are you kids doing? And just like that, let me click, click, click my fingers, just like that, the spell that those kids were in, suddenly they were like, Whoa! It's, um... The reason I raise this is that I think I've kind of gone through that myself in my own life uh, recently. Um, we don't realize, do we, what ruts we are in. We don't realize what patterns we are repeating. And you know that old uh, line from Socrates, the only thing I know is that I know nothing. And you're like, oh yeah, I can understand that on an academic level. So humble. Oh, so humble. Oh, so humble. But deep down, we all think, yeah, we know quite a lot, don't we? We know fucking loads. And just in the last few days, um, when uh, your subconscious becomes a little bit knowable to you and you realize how horribly deep it is and how much it actually drives your conscious life, then you realize how little you know, you realize how pathetic you are, and uh, you're like, shit. I've been a puppet to my own issues, like a real puppet on strings, like a Thunderbird. And it's t like, and, I, and you just don't realize, do you, when you're in that rut, everything is viewed from the rut. Everything is colored by the walls of the rut. And you just, you can't see any other way. And sometimes you just need someone to come to you and say, what the hell are you doing, kids? Now, um, in a way, I am lucky in that uh, I get about a thousand comments per day saying, what the hell are you doing? 
and uh, the kind of more, I guess, emotionally together uh, viewers out there, they see a lot of things where, you know, many people might egg me on and say, oh, great, go on, get the gestures outfit on and uh, go and uh, honk your fucking red nose out in town with all the vulnerable homeless people. And, um, yeah, one day, one day, guys, I'll tell you, I'll tell you just how messed up I am. But for now, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's commented and said, what the hell are you doing, Charlie? I'm not going to end it on my face. We're going to pan around. We're going to go wide angle. Oh, there you go. There's your wide angle. And we're just going to have a one last look at the river in the sunshine. Today's word is hope. Even here, even here guys, watch this, even here. The borough of Coldstream to commemorate the visit, visit of Queen Elizabeth II in 5th of July, 1962. And did you know this prime minister on my birthday, 64, okay, 16 years before I was born, but this Prime Minister is actually buried here in Coldstream. Now, the reason I started filming again is that no matter where I go, you know, there's always, there's always one of these bad boys. And here he is, I'm, I'm amidst all the flowers. Look at these lovely flowers that are here on purpose. And then there's Mr. Tomato, or Mrs. Tomato, whichever way you want to go. And uh, this is going to be a running theme for a while, guys. It's uh, turning into a bit of a bit of a bad obsession. Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday, the 26th of September. We're almost in October, and it's still hot. 20 degrees here in Coldstream, in the Scottish borders. And we begin today, trying not to get too much sky, because then it makes everything else dark. That's the contrast I don't want. We're here today outside the Esso petrol station. They're selling unleaded petrol and diesel by the litre. Now, the media manufactured fuel shortage didn't really stretch to Scotland. It was more of an English thing. I mean, I can't judge the big cities like Glasgow, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, not so big. But here in the borders, I went to Sainsbury's petrol this morning, came here to Esso. There's no rush, there's no panic. The point I'm trying to say here, if you can see how easily the media and the news can get everyone in a, a frenzied panic for any product, and let's be honest, they're trying to blame some minister that leaked some study saying there might be shortages. They're trying to blame him, but who's kind of repeated it again and again on the news every day, every day on the news, the media. And it's, uh, it's just incredible. It's a great lesson in psychology. It's a great lesson in how in a modern democracy, it's uh, not so much about... Let me try to rephrase that. In a, modern demo in a modern democracy, it's all about using the media to manipulate the public to vote for you and your party. And uh, the media is owned by big companies. And I'm aborting this rant, guys. I'm, I'm going off on one again. Some, can someone please say to me, Charlie, what the hell are you doing? Seriously, what the hell are you doing? Just, just film the fact there's no panic and leave it at that. Jesus. Check this out, guys, with a bit of solar flare on the Howden. W.E. Howden, Pet Food Supplies, established 1830. And it's still, still operating almost 200 years later as a pet food supply store. That's brilliant. And because we are in Coldstream, there's a little Coldstream guard on the door. Nice.